morning, boys and girls. Welcome to SGBC Children Worship. Wow, in a blink of an eye, it's already the last week of July. Times really flies, and half your summer holiday is already gone. But you still have one month to go. And the coming month, we're excited to bring you the Kids Club, Bible Club. Um, so you can invite your friends to join and maybe share the gospel with them as well. So that was really great. Now, is, are you ready for worship this morning? Have you finished your breakfast? Put away all the toys and things that will distract you. Get your Bible ready. And also, get ready for the countdown. And I guess you're all ready. Are you ready to worship God though? Remember what you need to do to get ready for worshiping God? You need to get your hearts ready. Think about the things that God has provided for you. And think about the reason why you want to praise and thank Him. Now we're ready. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning that we can come and worship you. We can worship you at our home. We can worship you together through YouTube. And we can sing along and we can praise you from the bottom of our heart. We thank you for this. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to get to know you. And we thank you for giving us this opportunity that we can come and worship you. We thank you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now remember last week we sang a song called Walking By Your Side. And that song is a really lovely song because it reminds us that God is with us all the time. So let's sing that song again. song that reminds us that God is wa always walking with us and always walking by our side. Now that we know that, we know that we can follow God every step of the way. Every hour, every day, and every minute, we can walk according to God step by step, and He will lead us. So remember this next song? We've been singing it in the past, and it's called Step by Step. And it's a really good song to remind us that we should always walk with God step by step of the way. Ready? Follow you. 
reassuring that we know that we can always follow God and He will always lead us to the way that He wants us to go. That's a wonderful song to sing. And you can enjoy and sing it with your family as well when you're doing family worship. Now remember Auntie Amanda, we haven't seen her for a long, long, long while. We're so glad to have her share God's word with us this morning. And she will continue on with the story of Jacob. So have your hearts and your ears ready and welcome Auntie Amanda to share God's word with us. Hi, boys and girls, good morning. I haven't seen you long time. I miss you all. Well, although many activities and public events are now cancelled, due to COVID-19, I still hope that you are enjoying the summer with your family. Back in January, I promised my kids that we are going camping with our friends. But now, because of the COVID-19, all the travel and gathering restrictions, I'm afraid I cannot keep my promise. How about you? Did you or your parents make any promise and cannot keep it because of the COVID-19? Mm, it's sad, isn't it? Well, things happen and we cannot keep our promise. When we break our promise, whether intentionally or not, it hurts other people. Today's Bible lesson is from the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis chapter 29 and it's about Jacob and Rachel. It's also about making promises and keeping them. Last week you've learned that when Jacob was on his way to his uncle Laban, he had a dream about a ladder going all the way up to heaven and God spoke to him in his dream. God promised him, wherever you go, I will watch over you and protect you. One day I will bring you back to this land. I won't leave you. I will do all I have promised. Today we will continue on Jacob's journey and follow him to his uncle Laban's place in Padam Aaron. That's where he met Rachel, the younger daughter of uncle Laban. Actually, Laban has two daughters the older one, Leah, and the younger one, Rachel. Jacob fell in love with Rachel. He stayed and worked for his uncle Laban, and Laban said to him, Well, Jacob, you shouldn't work for me without pay just because we are relatives. Tell me how much I should pay for you. Since Jacob is in love with Rachel, and he said, well, I will work for you for seven years if you will give me Rachel as my wife. Good. I would rather give her to you than to someone else. Stay and work with me. So Jacob worked for Laban for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. Wow. It's a lot of hard work and waiting. But for Jacob, it seems only like a few days because he loved Rachel so much. Isn't that sweet? So, seven years passed and the time came for him to marry Rachel, his love. So, Laban invited everyone in the neighborhood and prepared a wedding feast for the new couple. There was so much fun and joy. When the evening came, it was getting dark, and Laban brought the bride to Jacob. And then everyone go to sleep. And then, the next day in the morning, when Jacob wake up, he looked at her. believe what he saw. It wasn't Rachel. It was Leah, her older sister. My goodness. So he ran all the way and find Uncle Laban. 
What have you done to me? I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? <sighs> and Uncle Laban say, It's not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. But if you promise to work for me for another seven years, I will give you Rachel as your wife as well. Okay, Jacob said. So finally, Laban gave him Rachel as his wife. And then Jacob worked for him for seven more years. So finally, Jacob got to marry Rachel, the love of his life. That's their love story. But today's story is also about making promises and keeping them. Remember Laban? Well, he broke his promise. He promised to give him Rachel when Jacob worked for him for the first seven years, but he didn't. Jacob was very upset and had to work another seven years. Well, Jacob, the one who deceived his father Isaac, this time he find himself deceived by his uncle. He really got a taste of his own medicine. How about us? At some point in our lives, we all make promises. And a lot of times, we break those promises. Have you ever promised your parents that you will put away your toys after you finish playing? But you didn't. You just went away and you forgot. You broke, you broke your promise. Or let's say your parents promised to come to your recital or tournament, but they had to work overtime. They couldn't make it. So they broke their promise. Or you promise your teacher that you will listen and obey, but you didn't. You talk back. Again, you broke your promise. Wow, it's just so hard to keep all our promises all the time. Why? Because we are not perfect. You are not perfect. I'm not perfect. No one is perfect. But you know what? God is perfect. His promises are never broken. We can always count on him to keep all his promises. God's promises are like this thick book. Wow, thick and hot. I can never break it. Give me a minute. No. God's promises can never be broken. In Bible, it says, God has made a great many promises. They are all yes, because of what Christ has done. So through Christ, we say, Amen. We want God to receive glory. God's promises are never broken. He promised Jacob that he would watch over him, be with him, and he would do everything he promised. And he did. He blessed Jacob with 12 sons, a big family. And next week, you will hear the story of how God brought Jacob back home as he promised. You know what? The greatest promise God has made to us is the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. If we believe in Jesus and put our trust in him, God promised that we will spend eternity. We can live with him forever in heaven someday. Isn't it a wonderful promise? We know God always keeps his promise. The only problem is that we are forgetful. Sometimes we focus on our problems and forget God's promise. One way to help us to remember God's promises, I like to make a bookmark so that I can see it all the time and help me to remember. So now is your turn. Open the Bible and look for God's promise. Pick one you like the most and make a bookmark as a reminder for yourself. 
There are over 7,000 God's promises in the Bible. I've also listed a few here for you. But before you go do that, let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you have promised good for your children. We can trust you to keep all your promises. Help us to be faithful and keep our promises because we love you. Help us to remember your promises all the time. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Auntie Amanda, for sharing the story about Jacob and to tell us how God keep always keep his promises. Not like us, but God's always keep his promises. And that's really good to know because God promises that if we follow him and if we trust him, we will have eternal life and we will go to heaven and meet him one day. So that's wonderful. Now let's do Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, before we end our worship this morning, we have a special birthday coming up. It is Solomon's birthday on July 30th. Let's wish Solomon a wonderful, happy birthday. Solomon is turning 11. Happy birthday, Solomon, and God love you very much. Now, if you want to share some of the things that you have done in the summer with us, do send us a photo or maybe even a video so that we can post it and share with everyone. So I'll see you next week. Goodbye.